Hi everyone, back with another video. I missed two days of uploading, but it was a, for a good reason. My wife had her birthday, so I thought it was okay to not upload for a couple of days, but I'm going to try to get back into it. First thing I want to say, if you watch my video about Robin Hood, my conclusion at the end, everything happened that I said would happen. For anyone who didn't follow my advice, I'm sorry if you got in and lost 8%. For those of you who followed my adv advice and didn't get in right when it IPO'd, you're welcome. We're just going to go over some articles that describe what exactly happened and why Robinhood fell right after it was IPO'd. This is a surprise to some people when it falls, but it's pretty common. It happens all the time. 90% of IPOs start higher and quickly fall. So this isn't anything new. It shouldn't have surprised anyone. Shares of Robinhood closed down more than 8% in its NASDAQ debut after pricing near the low end of its IPO range. The online brokerage started trading at $38 per share, the low end of its range, valuing the company roughly at $32 billion. After dropping as much as 10% and ending the session at $34.82. Robinhood's market capitalization was about $29 billion. Trading for the first time under the ticker Hood, the online brokerage hit the public markets it seeks to democratize for amateur investors. Robinhood's whose stock trading app has surged in popularity among retail investors, sold shares in its initial public offering at $38 a piece on Wednesday evening. Robinhood is valued at 10.5 times forward EBITDA. For those of you who don't know what EBITDA is, it is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. The company sold 52.4 million shares, raising close to $2 billion. Co-founders Vlad Tenev and Baju Bat each sold about $50 million worth of stock. The company was last valued in the private markets in September at $11.7 billion. Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan Chase are the investment banks that led to the deal. Underwriters will have an option to buy an additional 5.5 million shares. Unlike most recent IPOs, Robinhood was profitable last year generating net income of $7.45 million on net revenue of $959 million in 2020, versus a loss of $107 million on revenue of $278 million in 2019. However, the brokerage had a loss of $1.4 billion in the first quarter of 2021, tied to emergency funding related to losses during January's GameStop trading mania. The company generated $522 million in revenue in the quarter, up 309% from the $128 million earned a year earlier. Rapid Growth In 2013, the free trading pioneer forced the brokerage industry to drop commissions on retail trading, lowering the barrier for millions of new investors to access the stock market. The app experienced record levels of new, younger traders entering the stock market during the coronavirus pandemic. The surge that continued into 2021, marked by a frenzy trading around so-called meme stocks. The millennial-favored stock app found itself in the middle of a firestorm in January amid the short squeeze in GameStop, which partially fueled by Reddit-driven retail investors. Robinhood, which offers equity, cryptocurrency, and options trading, as well as cash management accounts, at 18 million clients as of March 2021, up from 7.2 million in 2020, an increase of 151%. The company estimates funded accounts reached 22.5 million in the second quarter. Robinhood estimates its 18 million retail clients and more than 80 billion in customer assets in the first quarter ballooned to 22.5 million users and more than 100 billion in the second quarter of 2021. 
assets under custody have jumped to roughly 80 billion from 19.2 billion last March and are expected to top 100 billion in the second quarter. Robinhood is the third largest brokerage based on a number of funded accounts behind Fidelity and Charles Schwab, which purchased TD Ameritrade last year. Other competitors include interactive brokerage and new services like Webull and SoFi. Charles Schwab has a market capitalization of nearly $130 billion, and Interactive Brokers has a market valuation of about $26 billion. It's crazy to think about how Robinhood is the third largest brokerage when it was started in 2013, when Fidelity and Charles Schwab have been around for more than 50 years. The Menlo Park, California-based company reserved 20% of its 35% of its IPO shares for its own clients, which CAO Tenev said he expects will be one of the largest retail allocations ever. IPO shares have historically been set aside for Wall Street's institutional investors or high net worth individuals. Retail traders typically don't have a way to buy into newly listed companies until those shares begin trading on an exchange, so they miss out on the pop. Robinhood's loose lockup structure is also unorthodox. Employees will be able to sell 15% of their shares immediately after the public debut, compared with the traditional six-month lockup period. After three months, investors can sell another 15%. Despite its rapid growth in the past few years, Robinhood has some future risks. Most notably, the Securities and Exchange Commission is reviewing payment for order flow, or the money brokers firms receive for directing clients' trades to market makers. This controversial practice accounted for roughly 80% of Robinhood's revenue in the first quarter. The stock trading company collected a record $331 million in payment for order flow in the first quarter of 2021 according to an SEC filing. We think payment for order flow is a better deal for our customers versus the old commission structure. It allows investors to invest smaller amounts without having to worry about the cost of commissions. Robin CEO Jason Warnick said Saturday at the company's virtual roadshow. However, Warnick said Robinhood wants to be fully engaged in regulatory and political discussion about PFOF. He said that if the model changed, Robinhood and the industry would be able to adapt. Robinhood, which benefits from more speculative trading practices from its clients, also warned of a slowdown in trading revenue and account growth as the retail traders boom simmers. Options trading accounts for about 30% of revenue, while equities and crypto are 25% and 17% of revenues, respectively. We expect our revenue for the three months ending September 30th, 2021 to be lower as compared to the three months ending June 30th as a result of decreased levels of trading activity Rel relative to the record highs in trading activity, particularly in cryptocurrencies. Robin had said in an amended prospectus released last week. Robinhood also said it anticipates the growth rate of new clients will be lower in the third quarter from the second quarter. Robinhood Markets wanted to make history with its initial public offering, and now it has for the wrong reason. Shares in the broker behind the meme stock revolution fell 8.4% below the IPO price in the company's first trading session. That's the worst debut on record among 51 U.S. firms that raise as much cash as Robinhood or more, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. It dethroned the 2017 IPO by another brokerage, MF Global Holdings LTD, as the worst debut among qualifying firms. MF Global ended its first day down 8.2%. Robinhood opened up at $38 initial pub IPO price. For an IPO of Robinhood's size and larger, that's the weakest opening trade since Uber Technologies in May of 2019 among U.S. firms. Uber finished its debut session down 7.6%. So like I said in my last video, what happens with an IPO? 
they set the prices really high. Everyone buys in. And then they realize there's not enough people buying in. So they have to put the prices down. And this happens with 90% of IPOs. There are some IPOs that do start really high and stay that way, but those are few and far between. If you're not part of a company, and if you don't plan on holding a company long term, never get in right when there's an IPO. Even if you are planning on holding the company long term, you'll be better off getting in maybe a couple weeks or a month after the IPO happens. That way you'll avoid the downturn that happens right when the IPO takes place. I don't want to say I told you guys so, but I did. If you got in right when it happened, again, I'm sorry. That was your decision. If you didn't, you're welcome. <laughs> Funny how I'm talking like people are using this advice. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully I can get better videos, more entertaining. Um, yeah, I'm going to have someone start writing my script soon. So they should get better, I hope. Anyways, share this with your friends who invested in Robinhood. Tell them they're dumb and they shouldn't have. They should have listened to my advice. Like and subscribe. Do the notification bell thingy. And that's it. Bye. I love you so much.